In this video, we will look at a way of using meshes uh, to develop patterns on complex forms and surfaces. Uh, to give you an idea about uh, what I'll be covering in this video, I'm showing you two of the different examples. Um, so in this case, we have two complex meshes. Uh, one is a sphere actually, and the other one is kind of a um, joint like this. And we are going to uh, develop a way of applying a pattern uh, on top of this mesh. And um, so basically we can use this technique on any different, uh, any kind of complex forms basically. So um, now that we know what we are going to do, I'm going to um, actually move these aside and show you the kind of diagrammatic approach of how we're going to proceed. So we're going to start with uh, triangles. Actually, we can um, just start with, let's say, a polygon uh, with three sides. And uh, what I'm going to do is imagine this being the mesh. And I'm going to create a secondary offset to this, so a second mesh that is slightly above this. And then I will basically connect the midpoints of each opposite edge. But the way I want to do it uh, so we have basically six midpoint midpoints on the two meshes, and I want to connect one top midpoint to one bottom midpoint. So if I make this connection, for instance, the next one could be um, counterclockwise, and I can go in this direction, and the last one could be like this, so that we can have a kind of an alternating uh, interlocking uh, pattern like this. So the repetition of this will make them make the pattern seamless and continuous. And um, we will basically have this kind of uh, three-dimensional weaving or kind of a basketry pattern emerging. So to apply this technique, I'm going to open Grasshopper and we're going to start with a simple mesh. And you can actually open up the mesh creation tab and create uh, just a triangle. So we can, um, if we can apply this on a triangle, we can basically apply it on any type of complex surfaces. So. I want to offset this mesh because we're going to um, do it uh, twice. So I'm going to type in offset mesh. Um, uh, there are actually, diff I'm getting different components. You can actually go to the Weaverbird component. Uh, you should in install this plugin Weaverbird and then under transform, uh, there's this uh, Weaverbird's offset mesh. So I'm going to first load this and then supply it to offset mesh. Uh, it's offsetting it in a negative direction. It's because that's the normal direction for this mesh. If I um, flip my mesh, it, the direction will be reversed, so you can go in the opposite direction. And I'm going to give this uh, an offset value, so we can just use some decimals and keep these a bit closer to each other like that. So the first step is actually to um, use the bottom mesh and get its edges. Um, to do that, I'm going to go to the mesh component and under analysis, I'm going to start by deconstructing the mesh. And this deconstruct mesh will give you vertices, faces, uh, mesh contours, uh, mesh colors if you have any in the uh, normal directions. And then I'm going to go to deconstruct uh, face and get the um, connected to the faces and then th these will be giving you the indices for the vertices that we're going to use. And then I can do list item and grab the vertices that correspond to the mesh edges. There's a reason why I'm doing it this way is because we might have more complex meshes with more vertices so at the end of the day you want to get the corresponding vertex uh, by deconstructing the, fa uh, the faces. And I'm going to get the C as well. So now we have all the corners of the bottom mesh. And I want to get these edges as well. So we can actually draw lines between these points so that we can get the outline of the triangle. And this edge and the last one will be this edge. And I'm going to do um, an evaluate curve for uh, this line and I'm going to right click the curve, reparameterize it, and I want to evaluate it at the midpoint. So this will give me a point and a tangent vector at this location, and I'm going to keep it there for now. I'm going to copy this process for um, the other two lines as well. 
now that we get the midpoints of the bottom mesh, all I have to do is copy all this process and do it to the offset mesh as well so that we can get these middle points as well. And then if you want, you can actually reduce the number of um, inputs here by connecting all of them to the midpoint so that they could be like this. Or you can also use different parameters, but in this case, we want to use all the midpoints. So the, you can see this is going to control all the, all the evaluations along the mesh edges. Um, and then I want to actually first uh, uh, draw the lines to see which ones we're going to connect. So um, let's actually um, turn these off. And this point, uh, this midpoint will go, let's say, uh, here to this point on the top. So we're going to get this connection. And the second connection will be between uh, this bottom point and this top point. And the last remaining connection will be between these two diagonal points. So this one and this one. So this is essentially the type of mesh connectivity we are going to make. Uh, but I want to do these uh, with some thickness. So we cannot do it uh, using these lines actually. Um, so what I want to do is um, we can actually um, thicken these using the the tangent vectors as well. So I'm going to delete these. Um, actually, let's keep the lines so that they can guide us a, a bit. I'm going to do vector amplitude and get the tangent vector and multiply it with some value. Let's give it 0 0.5. We're actually going to um, control this as the mesh size is going to change. We can reduce or increase this value. And I want to move this point uh, using that vector so that we get this point here. And I want to do it in the reverse direction as well. So we want two points. One is the original uh, movement and the other one is the reverse movement so that this will be the thickness of this mesh face here. The next one, um, actually this is going to be just repeated for all of these evaluations. So all you can do is make copies of the, this process. I can also make groups so you can group uh, this cluster here and just copy it six times And then we want to uh, replace the points and the tangent vector with each of these evaluated points so that we can get the thicknesses done. And this will be here and this will go here and the last one will go here. So now you can see we repeated the process six times. And now what I want to do is draw a quad here. So it's going to be kind of a distorted polygon connecting these four points that we just offset. So I'm going to, um, we can actually still keep the lines to guide us, uh, but basically these two points here will be connecting to these two points. So I'm going to move them out a bit. Um, so we need to actually find where the other two points are and these are going to be these two and I'm going to move them out as well. Um, so we want to connect, we want to make these four into a mesh quad. So I'm going to do a weave here, uh, increase these inputs, right click to the pattern, do a manage integer collection and add two more items here. So this is going to be two, it's going to be three. And I want to go in a clockwise order. So basically start with this point and then go to this point here, which is going to be this one. Then go to this one and end with this one. And I want to graft all of these inputs. So that at the end, we will have these four wrapped in as, um, as basically a, a list. And then I can do uh, construct mesh. And for the face, I'm going to supply in a mesh quad. So the mesh quad will just give 0, 1, 2, 3 uh, as the quad corners. And if I supply these vertices, you will see that this connection is now created. 
Um, now that we have done this line, I'm going to delete that one. And now let's move on to the second line. So the second line will be between these four, uh, these two points, and it will be going here to this corner. So I can move these out as well. And all I have to do is make a copy of this um, Vive component. You can connect the same quad. And we're going to start uh, doing this in the uh, clockwise as well. So we can start with this point. Let's find that. It's here. So this is the first. Then we move to this one. Then we go here. And then the last one would be here. So it will give me this um, this quad here. And that will be this line. So I'm going to delete that line as well. And let's do the last one, which is going to be between these uh, four points here. So I'm going to move them closer, make a copy of the Vive again. And this time the clockwise uh, will start again from this side. So we can start here, go to the opposite corner, which is going to be um, here, this one, then here, and the last one is here. So that we got that fourth um, the third quad as well. And the last step is actually to um, connect these and join them. Uh, so we can actually connect them to a mesh com container and do uh, a Viver Bird um, join meshes and weld component. And that's essentially all we have to do. So I can just hide everything that we have done and hide the initial deconstruction and the offset as well. So this is what you should be seeing. So that's kind of the primitive construction on a triangle that we want to make. Now at the beginning of this, uh, because we are using a single triangle, we want to do this actually to multiple um, triangles. So we want the mesh to be a bit more complex. You can again go to the Weaver Bird define component and choose, let's say a mesh icosahedron, which is made out of uh, triangles. And we want, uh, let's say, a larger um, radius. And in this case, I'm going to supply 30 for this. And we want, uh, I'm going to move this triangle aside and this initial diagram in the middle as well. So the first um, icosahedron actually has these triangles. But what we want to do is get more kind of a smoother shape, like a spherical shape. So again, we can go back to the Weberberg component and do loop subdivision. So once we subdivide this into um, a bunch of times, we will actually get uh, more definition and we will get uh, more triangles forming. So at the third level, you can see that it's uh, getting kind of a smoother shape and more triangles. I'm actually going to keep this at two. So this is going to be the amount of triangles we're going to use. So these are the, all the triangles that we want. And all I have to do is um, this operation, we want to apply it to this mesh. So I can just connect them here. And you will see that the, the pattern will be formed on this uh, mesh surface. And if you go to the end of it uh, and bake the result, uh, let's actually see um, this one. Let's look at it in rendered view. Uh, you can see that the the construction is working pretty well, and the um, the weaving uh, pieces are kind of connected uh, on adjacent triangles, and this is exactly what we want. And uh, one problem though I'm seeing is that it didn't join them efficiently, is because we are actually getting grafted results. So here you should uh, just flatten this mesh so that the output will be uniform. So if I bake this, uh, now when you select it, it will be one single mesh. So that when uh, you can actually do a few more um, smoothing operations. So for instance, you can go to transform, you can do um, mesh thicken, for instance, give this some sort of thickness. Let's do uh, 0.2. And we can also um, do a subdivision as well. So we can subdivide this to make it a bit smoother too. And let's bake the end result. You can see now it's looking a lot better. So it's um, the advantage of this method is 
um, that it it will actually it can be applied to any type of mesh. For instance, the the form that I showed you in the at the beginning of the video, you can actually construct uh, different mesh boxes with uh, single faces. Let's say I have a bunch of uh, mesh boxes like this. It's like a, a T joint or like an X joint. And this one is, let's say here. And I'm going to do a mesh box union, mesh box, uh, mesh boolean union. And this will become a single box. Then we can do explode, delete these faces. And join it back again. Now, um, before we supply this in, you can actually uh, smooth this out by subdividing it as well. So we can just do a quick loop subdivision to this one as well. And it will be a lot uh, simpler now. Yeah, so that it will be smoother now. We can actually feed this in. And I have to change the parameters so that you can see like the sphere was a bit larger so might as well just scale this up. Um, let's start with five times. And this looks kind of okay. Let's see what we get when we bake the subdivided version. Yes, so you can see um, any type of mesh surface uh, which made out of triangles. Um, it can accommodate this uh, type of patterning basically and the nice thing is it's um, again uh, your mesh distribution doesn't have to be uniform like this uh, actually so you can you can have um, like uh, vertices where six triangles converge or five triangles converge it will still work efficiently because it's uh, the construction is based on a single triangle um, so I hope uh, this video helped um, I'm going to basically show you other methods of, me of using meshes to drive different topologies or patterns. Um, so if you want to keep um, uh, keep notified about these new upcoming videos, please consider subscribing to the channel. I try to upload videos uh, every other week. Um, thanks for watching.